Let's talk Coachella Valley. I'm Conrad Negron with Tina Marks, your host for a fun show. Informative show. We're going to entertain, explore the Coachella Valley. Give what people else? a lot of knowledge, a lot of things that you have not heard about. We're going to bring it to you here. And welcome back for another amazing episode with Dr. Malcolm Lessavoy. Boy, that was a... I, let me it's try that. Like it is. <laughs> try saying that five times. Uh, board certified yeah. plastic surgeon. Today we're going to be talking about facelifts, and I brought my oldest and dearest friend, Deborah Ma, to the show. Uh, she's going to be our demonstration, along with myself. Um, Deb, why don't you go ahead and tell Dr. Lesavoy what your problem areas are, what you've had done, and what your what your concerns are. Okay. Well, my problem area is the jowl and probably uh, the neckline down here. I have had a little Botox. Um, they gave me some Sculptra to supposedly pull the jowl line back, which didn't necessarily work. And then I've had Juvederm and Restylane and the newest filler, which is Restylane Silk. Uh, for some reason, this last time I had the fillers, it didn't take. I have the lines here, and then I have an extra line down here, and one line that goes sideways. Then they did a few different oh, things sideways. to try to... Where's that one? Let me see. Right here. This one goes a little sideways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you look in a 10 magnifying mirror every day, you see everything. So. so, And with your glasses on. Right, exactly. And then they did some... Um, um, uh, Juvederm and then the Restylane and the Restylane mm -hmm. Silk, as I'd said. So it didn't quite take well. Then they tried to do some subcision, which is they put a needle in here to move this around. That That's what work. I had for yeah. these lines. I That's sometimes to try to take the lines out. Then they did a Velis Smooth, mm -hmm. which actually caused me t uh, several little welts down here. And then they did, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's like a, 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 a round roller with needles. And they did this to also smooth the lines, which gave me extra lines. Is they that should, possible that it could <laughs> give her extra lines? Yeah, they used to do that in the Middle Ages, actually when they wanted to get uh, information out of people. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know, it well, sounds painful. I don't painful. know, uh, you're sure are keeping those companies in business. That's, exactly, that's for sure. exactly. Well, well, everything, all the backup <clears throat> was uh, comp, so. Okay, all right. Well, uh, the point is, is that uh, fillers, as we spoke, uh, uh, or as I will speak in the future, is good just to fill in areas of depression, mm -hmm. not our emotional depression, but the, right. these lines. But if you have extra stuff, if you have extra tissues mm -hmm. that are causing this, frequently it's better just to, to remove that extra skin and bring it back just a touch so it looks natural. Now, I was told the Sculpta um, would help do that, would yeah. pull this back, yeah. however, it- Did it? No. No, of course not. <laughs> it, it, of course not. It's no. a filler. Mm -hmm. If you have a dent, why would a doctor say that? Yeah. I mean, I guess that we could do a whole show I'm on that. I'm not my brother's keeper, or my sister's keeper, for that matter. <laughs> okay. But, but uh, the feeling is uh, that if if one fills in in one particular area, it takes away from the visual effect of another area, and in that sense, it, it may. Okay. But just assume that a filler is like um, uh, if you have a dent in this in this ceramic right here, and mm -hmm. we take some epoxy, we put it in, it fills it in. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. It doesn't move this desk in any way. Mm -hmm. If if you have extra stuff, and if you just lower your chin just a little bit so it's uh, in neutral, and uh, we're um, looking at some of this stuff here, this can just be pulled back very nicely and give you a very nice uh, neck profile, just with an incision behind the ears and the, the jowl areas here. It, instead of putting uh, fillers into this area, I would do a little liposuction just right here. Interesting. To just bring this back hmm. and, uh, to, to flatten that just a little bit because mm -hmm. gravity plays on all of us. I right. mean, we, we, we have no control unless we walk on our hands upside down. Thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this particular She'll area is ideal for a tiny little bit of liposuction and then some compression. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we're taking a lot of stuff out. What we're doing is basically roughening up the undersurface of the skin mm -hmm. and the lower surface where the skin attaches to, to allow it to really stick down and to flatten this area out. And if there's too much, then we can remove the skin just by doing a, a, a minor lower facelift. It, so where you that's do, what I was gonna, when you do the liposuction, yes. where do you do the incision? The incision is behind the earlobe. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, it won't it's show. a tiny two, three millimeter incision. So you would start no. with the liposuction. I would. And then and, if, oh. if you, you and, still weren't happy, then you would go ahead exactly. and do a lower facelift. Some, and less is more. You mm -hmm. don't want to look fake, right. in, no, in, no. in my opinion. 
if somebody, if you see somebody afterwards, uh, after I do this little neck or facelift, and somebody says, well, you know, did you just change your hair? Did you right, just come back from vacation? Right. I can't tell. Did you used to have uh, blonde hair, and now you have black hair, you know, that kind of thing? <laughs> but I can't tell. You look healthy. Exactly. Did you change your diet? You're working out more? Mm -hmm. Is your husband treating you better or not? You know? <laughs> no. Okay. So, I mean, that's the whole key. The right. key is natural, not not. Fake. Well, right? absolutely. I do yeah. believe in that. Yeah. I, I don't want to see you see too many people walking around with this pulled skin. No, it's terrible. I have a lot of patients in Beverly Hills or Los Angeles and Encino, and they say, I can go to a particular restaurant and I can look around and I'll tell you exactly who's had a facelift. I said, yeah, you can tell me who's had a bad facelift. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me who's had a good That'd facelift. Right. But and you, you do want somebody to notice something because if they don't notice anything, then... I want the person who is receiving it. No. Well, and you're like you said, they, they don't know quite what's exactly. different. Exactly. You have to seek some kind of. Frequently, thing. they say, "Oh, that you had something done, right? Mm -hmm. You know, something like that." Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Okay. But this now, we're doing all this under local that's anesthesia. That's what I was just going to bring exactly. up. It's local anesthesia. You're not completely under it. No. It's done with the a Valium sedative. With a little, a little oral Valium for sedation. Okay. And some local anesthesia, mm -hmm. and the local anesthesia, I can get your entire face numb in less than 30 seconds. And, and how long does this process take? Uh, the surgery itself is about an hour, hour and a half, uh -huh. and you go home, and it takes about 10 days or two weeks to really heal. A good facelift, and this is the same facelift I've been doing for many, many, many years. There's no shortcuts at all, right. it's just that we're not now not using general anesthesia. You don't have to go to the hospital, you have to stay overnight, you mm -hmm. go home and you sleep in your Is this becoming common practice that everybody... That there, are, there are many surgeons that are doing this now under local anesthesia, and it, it works but out But a lot very, are still well. using anesthesia. Yeah, most, and most and anesthesia is very... Uh, That's it, the key. It's very uh, dangerous for your body. Is it true that it takes an, a year to, to get out of your body? No, no, not no? really, no. But uh, sometimes a couple of weeks, okay. and uh, you'll kind of feel like the curtain just lifting, you know, mm -hmm. when the anesthesia is clearing. So most, most of the time, um, uh, it, when I see patients and they say, well, I, I can do it with general anesthesia, with an anesthesiologist mm -hmm. in a surgery center, or under local, nine times out of 10 patients, I don't want to go to sleep, I don't want to, but you will be sedated. And you just, the only thing you feel are the shots that I put in, less than 30 seconds. It's even uh, less than when you go to the dentist, except mm -hmm. with Dr. Feld, Dr. Feld's are painless. His injections are painless. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. the yeah. But it works out very, very well. Very Fantastic. Well. Yeah, yeah. That's great to know. So you yeah. do upper eyelids, lower eyelids. That's correct. Full facelifts, yes. lower facelifts, you do everything, All and you, you're, you're going to be doing it uh, on Fridays down here in the desert yes, at the I Smile am. Center. Yes, I am. Yep. So, yes. anybody that's looking to get a facelift, have any questions, consultation, please uh, contact Dr. Malcolm Lessavoy. Um, so <laughs> wonderful having you on the show. Well, thank and you. Um, thanks for coming thank on, Deb. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, you very much. Thank you.